Two-time Mr. Olympia Sergio Oliva goes for his third title, but this time he's up against a cocky young 22-year-old Austrian named Arnold Schwarzenegger. Full report of the 1969 Mr. Olympia coming up next on Bodybuilding History. I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little packers never mess with the big packers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken, so to speak. This episode of Bodybuilding History is brought to you by the Bodybuilding Legends Podcast. I'm your host, John Hansen. And on this episode of Bodybuilding History, I'm going to talk about the 1969 Mr. Olympia contest, which was the first epic showdown between Sergio Oliva and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sergio and Arnold would meet for a total of three times. And in 1969, Sergio was already a two-time Mr. Olympia, and Arnold was going up against Sergio at the 1969 Mr. Olympia. The 1969 Mr. Olympia took place at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, where all the great IFBB competitions in the 1960s took place. It was in September of 1969 that year. And the contest also featured the IFBB Mr. America and the IFBB Mr. Universe. So before we get into the Mr. Olympia, let's talk about the other competitions. The 1969 IFBB Mr. America contest was contested in three height classes, the short, medium, and tall classes. In the short class, the very muscular Warren Frederick took first place. Warren took third place in this contest in 1968, the year before. He went on to future success by competing in Dan Laurie's WBBG organization. In fact, he won the 1974 Pro Mr. America contest in the WBBG. Second place in the short class went to Joe Nista. Joe was a really popular bodybuilder in the IFBB around that time in the 1960s. He took first place in the short class in the 1965 IFBB Mr. America contest, which coincidentally was held with the very first Mr. Olympia contest that night. And then third place in the short class went to Johnny Iano. All right, moving on to the medium class, John DeCola was the big winner here. John took second place in this contest at the Mr. America in 1968 to Frank Zane. So he came back one year later and he looked fantastic. John used to compete in the AAU competitions. And in 1968, he switched over to the IFBB and it paid off because he won the medium class and he won the overall in 1969 at the IFBB Mr. America contest. John had a really good physique with really good arm development. His arms were sort of compared to Larry Scott and it was said that Frank Zane was a little bit worried about John when he competed with him in 1968. John was featured on a few magazine covers in the 1960s. And this was actually the last contest that John would compete in for a long time because John was a natural bodybuilder. He did not take steroids. And he said that he saw the advent of steroids coming into the competitions and he felt like he could not compete against these guys anymore. So he did not compete for many, many years after winning this 1969 IFBB Mr. America. Second place to John in the medium class was Pete Caputo. Pete was another popular bodybuilder in the 1960s. He took third in this class in 1968. So one year later, he moved up to second place. And in 1970, one year later, he actually took first place in the medium class at the IFBB Mr. America. Charles Fox was in third place in the medium class. Charles was a popular bodybuilder also in the 1960s. Joe Weider regularly featured him in his Mr. America and Muscle Builder magazines. And in 1969, Charles also took first place in, his, in the medium class at the IFBB Mr. International contest, a contest that was won by Arnold Schwarzenegger for the overall title. And then moving on to the tall class, Don Peters, who was another bodybuilder that was featured very extensively in Joe Weider's magazines in the 1960s. John was a very good looking guy and he took first place in the tall class at the 1969 Mr. America. Don was third in this class two years before 1967. And actually the night before this competition, they had a contest called the Mr. Western America and Don won the overall there. So he was coming off a big victory at that. And now he takes first place in the Mr. America. And then Mike Katz was in second place. Mike was uh, starting to come into his own in the 1960s by competing in the IFBB. 
So he takes second place to Don Peters here, but he wins the IFBB Mr. America one year later in 1970. Mike was already known for his massive chest development, and he would usually win best chest every year at the Mr. America. He also won the IFBB Mr. World in 1972. And then, of course, he went on to be featured very prominently in the movie Pumping Iron in 1975 when he competed in the Mr. Universe contest against Ken Wallet. And then third place went to big Tony Carroll. Tony was a massive bodybuilder, and he also, like Warren Frederick, he went on to future success by competing in Dan Laurie's WBBG competitions. He actually won the WBBG Mr. World that year in 1969. Tony was probably the biggest guy in the whole contest at six foot three and a half and 255 pounds. And then Tony eventually went on to have a successful career as a pro wrestler. So they gave out body part awards at the IFBB Mr. America, as they always did. John Nicola with his Larry Scott like arms won best arms pretty easily. Mike Katz, as expected, won best chest again. A bodybuilder named Gordon Babb, who was actually competing in his first IFBB competition, he won best back. Josue Rivera won the best abs award, which was kind of surprising because he beat out the perennial favorite Zabel Kwasuski for best abs. Zabel would always win best abs in every contest. So this was a big upset for Zabel. Don Peters won the best legs award and Warren Frederick won the most muscular. And then in the overall, of course, John DeCola wins the IFBB Mr. America contest, probably the biggest win of his bodybuilding career. All right, moving on to the IFBB Mr. Universe contest. According to the Muscle Builder report that I read, it said it featured bodybuilders from 40 different countries in this contest. So the Mr. Universe had competitors from Czechoslovakia, Trinidad, the Philippines, Bermuda, Canada, Japan, Barbados, Yugoslavia, Britain, Sweden, Norway, and the United States. So the big news about the 1969 Mr. Universe contest was Arnold Schwarzenegger was competing. Now, Arnold, of course, had competed in his very first IFBB contest one year earlier when the Mr. Universe contest was held in Miami Beach, Florida, and he was surprisingly beat for that title by Frank Zane. Arnold weighed about 250 pounds. He was just coming from Europe where he won his second NAVA Mr. Universe contest, and he was beaten by a 180-pound Frank Zane who was really ripped and tan and looked fantastic. And Arnold was shocked that he lost to such a smaller bodybuilder like Frank Zane. What happened to Arnold then after that was he signed a contract with Joe Weider, and then he stayed in the United States and he lived there for the rest of his life, of course. So one year later, here he is competing back at the Mr. Universe contest, and he wanted to show everybody how much he had improved. Now, the magazine report that I read said that Arnold weighed 240 pounds and he was really cut and defined and very tan a big difference from the 250 pounds he weighed one year earlier. So Arnold easily won the tall class. Actually, he easily won the whole contest. And in second place to Arnold in the tall class was Conrad Laflamboy from Canada. Conrad was actually a good bodybuilder. He won the Mr. Canada in 1965. And then he went on to win his class at the IFBB Mr. World Contest, both in 1967 and 1968. And in third place in the tall class was Vic Downs from Canada. Vic was a really good bodybuilder from Canada. He got into bodybuilding late in life, not until his 30s. And he was already 40 years old here in 1969. But Vic had taken first place in his class at the 1967 Mr. World Contest. And he was second to Sergio Oliva at the 1967 IFBB Mr. Universe Contest. And in the medium class at the 1969 Mr. Universe It was won by Rick Wayne, who was another great bodybuilder from originally from the Caribbean, and then he moved to England. Rick was a fantastic bodybuilder with great arm development, competed successfully in the 1960s, and then he went on to become one of the best writers for Joe Weider's magazine, for Muscle Builder magazine, in the 1970s and 80s. Second place to Rick in the medium class was Serge Jacobs from Belgium. Serge had won the 1968 Mr. Belgium contest. And then third place in the medium class went to Fred Jarrett. In the short class, Arnold's best friend, Franco Colombo, was the easy winner there. Franco was really improving his physique at this point in his career. And the next year, Franco would go on to win both the Mr. Europe and the Mr. Universe contest in the IFBB. In second place to Franco was Johnny Maldonado, a really good bodybuilder from New York. 
Johnny often competed in the Mr. America and Mr. Universe contest for the IFBB in the 1960s. And he was the uncle to Moses Maldonado, who went on to become a really good bodybuilder himself. Moses won the late heavyweight class at the 1982 NPC Nationals. And he took second place at the IFBB Mr. Universe that year. And Johnny Maldonado went on to also compete in Dan Laurie's organization. And he won the WBBG Pro Mr. Universe later that year in 1969. And then Elliot Gilchrist, another excellent bodybuilder from Canada, who was also an older bodybuilder like Vic Downs, he took third place in the short class. And then they had body part awards in the IFBB Mr. Universe, just like they did at the Mr. America. So they had a best poser award for both the Mr. America and Mr. Universe competitors. And Rick Wayne was the winner of the best poser award. Franco won both the best abs award and most muscular. Most muscular usually went to the guy who was the most cut in the contest. And I guess Arnold really gave him a battle for that award. And then Arnold, showing his dominance, won best chest, best arms, best back, and he won best legs. This is kind of a surprise because Arnold was somewhat criticized for his leg development later on in his career. But Arnold's legs were so ripped and they were so great at this contest that he also won the best legs award. And then, of course, Arnold went on to easily win the 1969 IFBB Mr. Universe, getting revenge from his loss to Frank Zane the year before. All right, now let's go to the big contest, the Mr. Olympia contest. This is the one that the fans were eagerly waiting to see. Sergio Oliva was coming back for his third win. Sergio had won the contest in 1967 and 1968, and he was so good in 1968 that nobody would go up against him. Sergio won unopposed. He was only one of two bodybuilders to ever win the Mr. Olympia with no competition. Arnold was the other one in 1971, but that's another story. But this time, Sergio had a real competitor in the form of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Franco was also in the contest. This is somewhat forgotten by a lot of people. It was not just Arnold versus Sergio at the 1969 Mr. Olympia. Franco was also competing in his first Mr. Olympia as well. So the contest was very, very close between Arnold and Sergio. Um, Sergio was better than ever. He was bigger than he was in 1968. He was still very cut. And Arnold, of course, as I said, was really improved from the year before in 1968. He weighed about 240 pounds. He was one of the biggest bodybuilders in the world. He just had an incredible arms, incredible chest. The report I read said he had 22 inch arms and a 57 inch chest. So he was just an amazing bodybuilder. And the New York fans were going crazy. They didn't know who was going to win. And they actually, for the first time, had a pose down. They brought Sergio and Arnold on stage together, which, according to the reports I read, had never been done before 1969. So this was a historic event because it was the first time they actually had a pose down at the Mr. Olympia. So the crowd was going absolutely crazy. The judges didn't know what to do. It was a really, really close event. And from what I read, it was a four to three decision. Sergio got uh, four first place votes. Arnold got three. Sergio barely beat Arnold Schwarzenegger at Arnold's very first Mr. Olympia in 1969. And when it was announced, Arnold did the famous hug and he kissed Sergio on the side of the face and he really showed good sportsmanship and it did pay off because well, as history shows, one year later, Arnold won his first Mr. Olympia defeating Sergio and unseating him. But at this event, Sergio was really, really happy because he had won his third Mr. Olympia title and he had beaten a great competitor in the form of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And now the stage was set for next year, 1970, when Arnold and Sergio would meet again in New York for an historic showdown to decide who would be the next Mr. Olympia. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bodybuilding History for the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. I'm your host, John Hansen. Be sure to check out my Bodybuilding Legends podcast every week on your favorite streaming service. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more episodes of Bodybuilding History, as well as more great episodes of the Bodybuilding Legends podcast. This is John Hansen. Until next time, take care.